Hello, welcome back to the desk corner, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. We talk about a lot of art related and pencil related specifically things on this channel. So in today's video, I thought it would be fun for me to share with you guys my most used polychromos colored pencils. Now, of course, everybody's going to use different colors, but if you make similar art to the type of art that I make, then this might be useful for you. I tend to not create art that has a lot of really bright colors. I don't end up using my yellows and very bright oranges and all of these colors as much as I would like to because a lot of the artwork I create doesn't really call for those colors too much. I end up using a lot of the neutrals. As you may have noticed with all the empty slots here, I've actually already picked out my most used colors and the way that I did that is I looked for the shortest pencils. So the ones that I had to keep sharpening over and over because I had been using them a lot. Now there are some pencils here that I didn't pick out because I remember using them for like one specific project and just using up so much of the pencil for that project, but they're not necessarily colors that I use a lot. Really quick, before we get started, I just wanted to announce that I've started a Discord channel called The Desk Corner, and it's going to be for all art-related discussion. I thought that would just be so much fun. If you don't have Discord, it's kind of just a place to chat. It's organized in some different sections, so there's different topics to discuss, and it's just going to be an artist's type group where we can discuss art-related things, um, sometimes send pictures of artwork and works in progress and things like that, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So please join that if you would like to. I'll include the link in the description. I very loosely kind of organized them into different groups of color. As you can see, this is a very neutral palette. As I said before, I don't use a ton of bright colors. Here and there, there's a couple bright colors, but for the most part, we've got a very neutral palette here. Um, some of these pencils are just tiny little stubs, so some of them I use very, very frequently. What's really funny is I actually picked out 36 pencils and that didn't happen on purpose, that was by accident. Um, as many of you guys know, a lot of colored pencil sets come as 36, so I guess this would be like my 36 set of pencils. Look what I just made for you guys. Okay, it's actually quite a big deal because I'm very lazy and I don't like to make these really nice kind of charts. I mean, this is still quite uneven, it's not perfect, but most of the time I like to just swatch and be a little bit messy with it, do something like that. There's my polychromo swatch chart, that's usually what I do, but I decided I wanted to make this very aesthetic and everything just fits perfectly. The fact that there's 36 pencils, it just works perfectly. Wouldn't it be funny if I miscounted them? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You know what, you guys, I just picked out two extra colors. Don't worry, I know you're worried about the chart, don't worry. I picked out two colors because I realized that two of the 36 most used colors are black and white, and that isn't really helpful to anybody because of course those are going to be the, some of the most used colors. I'm ready to do this. I think what we're gonna do is swatch them out first, and then that way you guys have a visual, and I'm not just talking and <laughs> explaining by showing you the pencil itself. I wanna have a visual and then we're going to talk about why I think these colors are my most used. So let's go ahead and get started. you guys I swatched out all 36 colors it took me probably longer than I'd like to actually admit but now's for the fun part where I'm gonna go through and kind of figure out why is it that these are my most used colors and I do have some explanations for that 
So at the top here we have our grays. These are the grays I use most often. Payne's Gray is by far my favorite gray ever. It works so great for shadowed areas um, as a substitute for black or in combination with black. If an art set does not include Payne's Gray, I'm genuinely upset about that. I also tend to use Warm Gray 6 a lot. That is a very, very deep gray, and it is warm toned rather than cool toned. Payne's Gray tends to have more of a bluish tint to it, so I do end up using this a lot. It's pretty much just as dark almost as Payne's Gray almost, just with a different undertone. We also have a couple more Warm Grays. We have 5, 3, and 2, so apparently I do use the Warm Grays quite a lot. And then we have Cold Gray 2 as well. Um, I don't know why I don't tend to use the cold grays as much, but I suspect it's because I use Payne's Gray and Substitute for most of the cold grays that are darker, so that's probably the reason, if I'm being honest. Moving on to the next row, we've got some blues and greens, and Dark Indigo is the deepest blue in this set. However, it's got a very grayish sort of undertone, a little bit of yellowish as well, so it doesn't work with everything. I tend to like using Indian Throne Blue more. I thought it was Indian Throne with an O, but there's an E apparently, so I'm not really sure which way is correct now. I always thought I heard Indian Throne, but that's actually one of my favorite blue colors ever. It works really great for skin undertones, actually. We've got Helio Blue Reddish, which is just a very, very pure blue color. I really like this color. Actually, it just looks like the color of the ocean sometimes. It's very pretty. We've also got Ultramarine. That tends to work very well for skin tones, and it just is something that will really bring out a cool undertone. So Ultramarine is really great. Um, I guess I don't really have that many actual purples. Um, I guess you could count the violet over here, but I just noticed that there aren't really any purples. We've got chrome oxide green and chromium green opaque. Those are just two very natural foresty looking green colors, a little bit olive looking, and those are the greens I tend to use most often just because they're not extremely bright and they're just very natural, so they tend to come up a lot when I'm creating just drawings that have backgrounds or animal drawings and things like that. They also work great for eye colors. We have earth green, yellowish, and may green, and when I was swatching these, I realized that they're almost the exact same color, and that's kind of funny. This one might be just a bit more yellow, which is funny because this one's may green, not earth green, yellowish, but this one's a bit more yellow. Of course, earth green, yellowish, and this one is earth green, so you could see how they're similar to each other, except this one having more yellow and earth green being a bit more gray. Now, earth green, Actually, I'll show you the pencil. It's this one. I tend to use this a ton. It works for everything. It's kind of just like a sage color, very natural, and with that gray undertone, it really just works well for anything. I use it for underlayers a lot if I'm trying to get that grayish tone without being too gray. I never noticed how similar these two are until I looked at them next to each other like this, but they're very similar to each other. So moving on to browns, we have dark sepia, which is my shortest pencil actually. It's tiny, it's a little stub. Actually, let's put it next to black. I guess black is still a little bit shorter, um, but next to black, dark sepia is my other most used color, kind of like Payne's Gray. It's one of my favorites to use in substitute of black or for shadows. I pretty much use that one in almost every drawing that I do because it's just so dark, it's almost black, and it works for any type of shadows that you're doing. I have walnut brown, and Van Dyke Brown, which are kind of similar. Maybe this one is just a bit more muted in color. Well, Van Dyke Brown may, might be a little bit more uh, warm toned. I don't know how to say this one. Bistre? Bistre? I don't know. But this one I tend to use a lot too. It's just kind of a middle brown tone. It's not too dark. It's very um, coffee with milk looking, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm not good at describing these things. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, we also have Raw Umber. Um, raw umber is a very popular color. Maybe I didn't layer that one on enough. It kind of looks a little bit, a little bit lacking. So let me add another layer. Raw umber comes up a lot. This is a very popular color. Now, of course, these are very great for skin tones. We're getting into the skin tones now. So um, starting with dark sepia, pretty much down. All of these colors work really well for skin tones. Next, we have green gold, which is basically like a natural gold color that actually comes up kind of often in reference photos, so that one's kind of fun. It's not metallic or anything like that. It is just a natural color that looks a little bit gold. And then we have 
a light yellow ochre, dark Naples ochre. I use these two a lot because they're very natural yellows. Next we have cream, and if you've used the Prismacolors, the cream is drastically different. Their cream is a little bit more like off-white. This one's not an off-white, it's pretty much yellow, just a very, very light shade of yellow. I still tend to use this color a lot, and it's always a base if I'm coloring something that's actually yellow because it's a really nice um, highlight color almost. But if you're new to polychromos, don't expect the same cream color as you would get in the Prismacolor set. Our final two rows here are very orangey, reddish. We have Sanguine, or Sanguine, Sanguine I think. Don't know how to pronounce it. I'm bad at pronouncing things, but um, I use this one all the time. Let me show you it because it is pretty short of a pencil now. I use it a lot with skin tones. It's a great um, underlayer if I want to get that reddish warm tone underneath. And I've also got terracotta and burnt ochre, which I pretty much knew those would be on this list because those are very popular and they tend to come up a lot as well. Indian red and red violet. So Indian red is kind of just this burnt red color and I tend to use this a lot in portraits because it really just works for those shadowed areas that aren't quite, you don't want to quite use the brighter red colors, um, but it really blends in nicely with all the other colors that you use in skin tones. So Indian red, I recommend that one a lot. Red violet, I use that one for skin tones too, just I have to be a little more subtle with that one because it's quite purple actually. Light red violet didn't make this list, it didn't make the cut, but light red violet I often use in combination with red violet because the red violet is pretty deep and light red violet is a little bit lighter obviously because it's called um, light red violet, but that can help create that nice uh, reddish purple undertone. We've got dark red which is of course a deeper red color and pale geranium lake which might be the brightest one or one of the brightest ones in this entire palette. Venetian red, which this one along with this one I use all the time. This one is coral, so that's actually renamed, I guess uh, Faber-Castell renamed some of their pencils. That used to be medium flesh, and now they renamed it to coral, which makes a little more sense because it's actually really, really pink, and it's almost like a blush color. Then we have cinnamon. It's a bit more muted, but this one comes up a lot in skin tones, and let me show you guys my cinnamon because that is just a really, really, really nice skin tone. It works, again, it's one of those that works with pretty much every skin tone. I include that one. It just works really well. We also have beige red, which used to be named light flesh, and of course that one is better for lighter skin tones, but it also just works as an undertone in general for a lot of skin tones. And then we have ivory. It's kind of similar to the Prismacolor cream. So I want to show you guys the difference here between ivory and cream. The cream is so much more yellow in the Polychromo set. If you're looking for a pencil or a color that is similar to the Prismacolor cream, you want to go with ivory, not cream, from the Polychromo set because the cream is just going to be much more yellow. The ivory might be more what you're looking for if you're looking for an off-white. So there's that, you guys. I hope that this was somewhat interesting, even though a lot of it was me just talking. But I wanted to explain a little bit why I think I use these colors a lot, what I use them for. I use them for portraits. All of these colors, pretty much all of them, work really well for portraits. I also use them for a lot of my backgrounds. If I'm doing an animal drawing or something natural, these colors tend to come up all the time. And yeah, I hope that this video was of some use to you. If you're wondering why I chose to use my polychromos, it's because my other pencil sets are a little bit unreliable here using this method of choosing the shortest pencil because my Prismacolors I don't use very much anymore. I pretty much don't use them at all anymore. When I used to use them a few years back, I had a sharpener that would just really eat through the pencils really quick. So you could tell which ones I used the most, but a lot of my pencils had shrunk down so it's not as reliable. I also just don't use them enough anymore for me to tell you guys my most used colors. And with my Luminance set, um, they're relatively new in comparison to my polychromos, plus I don't use them quite as often, so that's not really super reliable. But when I start using my luminance a little more, which I'm going to try to get into because I'm always afraid of using them since they're so expensive, but as I get into using them more, I'm going to probably make a similar video and just tell you guys which colors I end up using the most 
and I think that would be interesting. I still find it funny that I ended up picking 36 and that was not even planned. But that's about it for the video, you guys. I recommend doing this exercise if there's a colored pencil set you use quite often because it's actually really, really fun and helpful. If there are some more colors that you tend to use a lot, if you have the polychromo set, let me know in the comments down below or even if you're talking about another set, I'd like to know what colors you guys end up using the most. And yeah, if you like these types of videos, I'll make more of them. I've been debating making a skin tone video for polychromos, but I've seen so many people do the thing already, you know, the thing with the circles on the paper, and they do all the different skin tones. It's just been done before, so I'm trying to think of something a little bit different to do since so many people have already created videos like that, and hopefully I'll come up with something for skin tones, but I hope that this one was kind of helpful just to see what colors I end up using the most. And that all being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again so much for watching. Bye!